Buenos dias and good morning. Welcome as we gather together to worship, celebrate God's love and grace. I also want to welcome those who are joining us by video and happy Father's Day to all of you. Along each of the aisles we have these purple boxes. Those are for your offerings. And then also there's a little slip of paper in your bulletin. If you'd put your name and contact information on that, that'll be helpful in case we need to contact you. Also, if you do have prayer requests, that's an excellent place to put that. Uh, please be sure and invite the people you're seated near to join us for fellowship after the service. It'll be straight out through this door into the next building. Uh, I need to call on the deacons, Diane. Good morning, everyone, and happy Father's Day. Uh, on behalf of the deacons, I've been asked to talk about socks and undies and backpacks. And this year, we are doing it much earlier because the Las Cruces Public Schools starts July 17th this year. So we're a full month plus earlier than normal. And the main, the, this church has been the mainstay of the Socks and Undies programs at the Gospel Rescue Mission. Uh, every time I walk in or there, they thank us at you, the church, for being such a, a mainstay. So we're asking everyone, if possible, to contribute much earlier than, than before. We do need names for backpacks by the latest the 10th, and we'd like the names, ages, uh, grades and schools if possible. Um, socks and undies, we've, since COVID, everything changes, of course. Um, and so we've combined the two separate projects that have been projects uh, forever um, into one, and it's back to school. So please make checks to back to school supplies or just back to school, and they can be used either way as needed. Um, and just Thank you again for all your help in the past and look forward to it this year too. In your bulletin, everybody got one of these yellow sheets about Vacation Bible School. What I'd ask is that you would put that in the hands of someone you know uh, so that we can encourage more kids, more families to participate. And so please take it home with you and give it to a neighbor, a family member, uh, so that we can have uh, wonderful participation. Let us also prepare our hearts for worship. There's a meditation at the beginning of our bulletin. Please join me in calling ourselves to worship using the words printed in our bulletins. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and do not forget all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases. As a father has compassion for his children, so the Lord has compassion for those who fear him. For he knows how we were made. He remembers that we are dust. But the steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him and his righteousness to children's children. Bless the Lord. All his works 
in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Pray with me. God of heaven and earth, you who are revealed most perfectly in Christ Jesus our Lord, we thank you this day for calling us to be your people, for watching over us and guiding us in the way we should go. We come before you now, O oh God, aware of our need for you. We come before you to worship you and to seek your will for our lives. Bless us in this holy time. May we find words and thoughts of hope. May our feelings, as well as our minds, be engaged in your message and in your living presence. Help us to find the living Christ, not only in scripture, but in song, and in praise, in prayer, and in one another. And with what we find, may we reach out to others in his most holy name. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in the darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. So let us confess our sins to God, knowing that he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Gracious and generous God, we confess that we live lives that are far less wonderful than you intend and desire for us. We have been blessed with far more than we need to live well, yet too often fear of scarcity makes us hesitant and stingy in sharing our abundance with those in need or with the mission of your church. You first loved us and call us to respond, letting nothing get in the way of a deep and meaningful walk with you. But sometimes we let things that do not truly matter distract us. Help us, Lord, to use our lives and resources well, according to your will and purpose. May we live useful lives, growing more and more like Jesus day by day. In your great compassion, forgive our sins, renew us, help us to live more faithfully, and serve as led by your Holy Spirit. Amen. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls us is faithful, and he will do this. Friends, believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, all our sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. For all our sin is forgiven and gone. May your ever be us closer to Christ and his intended purpose for our lives. Now, cleansed from our sin, how should we live in faithful response? Jesus said, I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. 
By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. the young disciples, please. Okay. 
The scripture we are going to read today, I mean, Dr. Lohman is going to read it. I was going to that scripture in Matthew chapter 9. Something very important. Just, I, I, I just had a portion of that scripture, which means, which talks about compassion. It says that Jesus went about everywhere, teaching in their synagogue, healing their sicknesses and their diseases, everywhere. And that thing that Jesus was doing, going about everywhere, teaching, making ignorant people to know, give them wisdom, knowledge, helping them to deny idolatry and all ungodliness. That was what Jesus was doing. And the people liked it. The people do what? They liked it. So everywhere that Jesus went, the people were gathered. They want to hear more. Aside from the food, sometimes that do happen. All of us like food, don't we? Jesus' teaching is something that the people like a lot. So this particular time in Matthew chapter 9, people heard that Jesus is in a particular place. You know what happened? All of them gathered. And what kind of people gathered? The poor, the sick, everyone, women, children, everyone. And at this particular time when Jesus gathered, the people gathered to see Jesus. There was a kind of uh, people who say, you don't need to see him, you are not important. And Jesus said, no. He wasn't happy about it, the way people were treating the, the people that gathered to see him. He said, no, I am here for everyone. Now, remember the theme of what we are talking about is what? Compassion. Jesus showed compassion to everyone. That reminds me, I will tell you how I showed compassion during COVID-19. During COVID-19, I was living in an apartment, and there is this old lady who, of course, you know all the restrictions during COVID-19 was very gruesome, very much. So she, I just stayed one day, I said, this woman might need something from the shop. I went to her, I said, ma'am, would you, for any reason, if you want me to get anything from Walmart or any, I'll be happy to do that. She said, you are a godsend. I've just been thinking how I would go to the shop. And she gave me money and a list of what she wanted. I went to the shop and got it for her. Do you think that is compassion? Can I ask you, have you ever shown someone compassion before? Maybe in your school? Maybe anybody? Has there any one of you showed compassion or kindness? Even if we have not, we can still learn. Just like Jesus told those people who were treating the crowd not too nice. They learn how to show compassion too. Jesus said, no, everybody is important. And that's what we need to do. We need to treat our friends, people that we know, and people we don't know, with what? Compassion. In our schools, anywhere we are, we need to show compassion. And we can show compassion in a variety of ways. Can any one of you tell me how we can show compassion? Holding the door for somebody? Absolutely. Holding the door for someone. That's how to show compassion. Anyone else? If someone's lonely, kind of comfort them. If someone is in a kind of distress, we comfort them. We become, we be their friends. That's how we can show compassion. And there are so many ways we could do it. The way you show compassion might not be the way I show compassion. So we have so many ways we can show compassion. And the Lord will help us to do that in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for these young ones. Bless them. Teach them how to show compassion. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Let us pray together. Lord, we thank you for this time and space for prayer and quiet reflection. We are infinitely blessed because you do care about us and the contents of our lives. That you are at work healing our broken world and that your truth will prevail. Your healing and saving purpose will be perfectly fulfilled. May the truth of your promises, your grace and power provide the strength, assurance, and peace we need to build our lives. We ask that you'd bless us, comfort us, and encourage us this day. For our world seems terribly broken and troubled as human evil, corruption, violence, and depravity seem to overwhelm the good and truthful, the generous and gracious. Help us trust and live the truth that we are exactly where you want us to serve with courage, integrity, and strength to make a difference for us to proclaim the good news and our hope in you. According to your calendar today, fathers are being remembered and celebrated, families being honored and recognized. Our prayer today is for the joys and sorrows this day can bring, for those whose fathers they dearly love. We appreciate the gifts and graces that have come through them through their father. For those whose father is dearly loved but no longer living, we remember the gifts and graces that have come to us through them. For those who have recently lost or who are facing the imminent loss of their own dear father. May they find comfort in their grief, hope in their despair, and the strength of the love they've received. We give thanks for families who have and who do sustain and support us in our living and who love us no matter what. We pray, compassionate God, for those whose father was a source of pain or hurt. For those for whom one or more members of the family have caused them to suffer. May they find refuge and hope in your love. Through your presence, inspiration and compassion. May all their wounds be healed. Holy God, we pray for those who struggle. For the lonely and wounded for the sick and ill, for the anxious and troubled. You know our troubles and fears, and you alone are the answer and our hope. In the silence, let us hear your response to our private prayers and petitions. We do thank you, Lord, that your love overcomes all our losses and fears. We thank you for the grace you continually to pour into our lives and this world. We pray all of this through Jesus' name. Amen.
The Old Testament reading is from the book of Numbers, chapter 27. Moses spoke to the Lord, saying, Let the Lord, the God of the spirits of all flesh, appoint someone over the congregation who shall go out before them and come in before them, who shall lead them out and bring them in, so that the congregation of the Lord may not be like sheep without a shepherd. So the Lord said to Moses, Take Joshua, son of Nun, a man in whom is the Spirit, and lay your hand upon him. Have him stand before Eleazar the priest and all the congregation, and commission him in their sight. You shall give him some of your authority, so that all the congregation of the Israelites may obey. But he shall stand before Eleazar the priest, who shall inquire for him by the decision of the Urim before the Lord. At his word they shall go out, and at his word they shall come in, both he and all the Israelites with him, the whole congregation. So Moses did as the Lord commanded him. He took Joshua and had him stand before Eleazar the priest and the whole congregation. He laid his hands on him and commissioned him, as the Lord had directed through Moses. The New Testament reading is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapters 9 and 10. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. See, I am sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves, so be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Merciful and wise God, we ask you to open our hearts and minds to your word, to your healing, loving presence, and may the Holy Spirit open our understanding. May the words of my mouth, the meditations of our hearts, be pleasing and acceptable in thy sight. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. When I was a much younger man in my late 20s, Cancer ended the life of my business partner, friend, and mentor, which left me in charge of running the corporation. Right after his funeral, an unsettling truth suddenly hit me about the lack of a safety net and that the, all the decisions I made from now on, those would determine the success or failure of the business and affect the lives of all my employees and their families. As a fairly young man, I felt the weight of that responsibility of living into that change in this transition of leadership. The numbers passage Janet read is also about leadership transition. The descendants of the people liberated from Egyptian slavery we're at the edge of the promised land, just about to go in, but Moses won't be leading them as they enter. Try to imagine what that might have felt like. It was Moses who stood before the mighty ruler Pharaoh and demanded liberation. God commands you, let my people go. 
Moses had called down the plagues that demonstrated God's power against which Pharaoh and the Egyptian gods could not prevail. High atop Mount Sinai in the very presence of Almighty God, Moses had received the Ten Commandments on the stone tablets and faithfully led the people of God for 40 years in the wilderness. That whole generation had been born during that wilderness journey. And so the only leader and spokesman for God that they'd ever known was Moses, who had attended to their needs, both physical and spiritual. But now Moses wouldn't be there to follow and rely upon. Starting in verse 15. Moses said to the Lord, saying, Let the Lord appoint someone over the congregation who shall go out before them and come in before them, who shall lead them out and bring them in, so that the congregational Lord may not be like sheep without a shepherd. As it turns out, God already had that all well covered. Joshua had demonstrated his trust and confidence of God and it was really just a matter of confirming God's call. Verse 18, So the Lord said to Moses, Take Joshua, son of Nun, a man in whom is the Spirit, and lay your hand upon him. Have him stand before Eleazar the priest and all the congregation and commission him in their sight. You shall give him some of your authority so that the congregation of the Israelites may obey. Forty years earlier, the first time they came near the promised land, Moses had sent out 12 men to spy and check out the land. Ten of them returned fearful, insisting that even with God's help, it would not be possible to conquer the land that God had promised them. Their fear convinced the people to rebel against God and Moses and complain that it had been a terrible mistake to leave Egypt. And so God declared that none of that generation would ever enter the promised land. But two of these spies sent by Moses, Joshua and Caleb, did trust God. And urged them, let's move in now, immediately, and see how God will accomplish his promise in victory. They had no doubt that God would fulfill his word as promised. And by that, Joshua demonstrated the kind of leadership that God wanted. Therefore, after Moses, Joshua would lead the people to conquer the land so that they would not be like sheep without a shepherd. That phrase, image, and metaphor, like sheep without a shepherd, was also used by several of the other Old Testament prophets to describe the many failed leaders of Egypt, of Israel, who had not been faithful or obedient to the Lord God, but had betrayed God's call and the people's trust. When Jesus uses that same phrase in Matthew, like sheep without a shepherd, He is drawing from that same Old Testament image and metaphor and he's connecting the failed and unfaithful leaders of the Old Testament to the scribes and Pharisees in conflict against Jesus. Like bad shepherds, they were not caring for the people of God. They had no compassion for the lost, the outcast, or the struggling. Matthew is highlighting the stark contrast between the self-serving hypocritical religious leaders and Jesus. Starting verse 35. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and curing every disease and every sickness. He saw the crowds and had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Matthew is showing how the life and ministry and mission of Jesus was in fulfillment of God's promises throughout the Old Testament. 
and that Jesus was truly the good shepherd being opposed by religious leaders who lacked compassion for God's people. In his compassion, Jesus recognizes the great need and points toward the mission of the church, starting verse 37. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers to this harvest. See, I'm sending you out like sheep amidst wolves. So be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Here, Jesus is describing the true mission of the church. The ministry of discipleship that's been passed down through the generations. There's a plentiful harvest of human need and too few laborers. The lost and the wounded of this world like sheep without a shepherd. Now, here's how all that connects and relates to us and to our lives today. First, over the next few weeks and months, our church officer nominating committee will begin meeting whose crucial task is to find folks for the life and mission of this church. They are charged to discern the voice and call of the Holy Spirit and then place those names of church members into nomination those whom they believe God has called and equipped to serve as church officers, as elders and deacons. And the faithfulness and the effectiveness of our session and the board of deacons will depend on those nominations and who this congregation elects and whether or not we have truly listened to God's Holy Spirit. I can't overemphasize how important this is especially during this season of rebuilding our church's ministries. The nominating committee is going to begin their work of discernment soon. Therefore, I'm asking that each of us, that is all of us, pray diligently for them through this whole process, that they will hear and heed the Holy Spirit's guidance. And that if you're invited to serve as a church officer, that you will carefully and prayerfully consider your call. The question of leadership and call is an important one to us, and, of course, to God. For the quality and the faithfulness of our church leadership certainly influences the spiritual welfare of God's people. And secondly, and this is critically important for us to believe and understand, that ministry is not about just elders, deacons, and pastors. For we are all, each one of us, called and equipped by God to grow in our faith by serving God usefully, by allowing the grace and compassion of God to flow through us freely out into this world so that our thoughts, our words, and deeds actually do make a difference. So wherever we are, whatever our context and situation in this life, there's always some way that we can live out our faith, some way to make a positive difference in someone's life. You don't have to be strong and vigorous to pray well, do you? Or to send a hopeful, encouraging note or an email. Or to brighten someone's day with a phone call. To follow Jesus means an active faith, generosity and compassion. Various ways, at various times, each of us has opportunities to make a real difference and to have some influence toward good. Authentic Christian faith in living is much more than just getting into heaven. We have all been uniquely called and equipped to serve our God well. A faithful Christian life is about being active and productive so that we're all serving usefully toward the kingdom of God. Beyond simply continuing to be a Christian each day, I hope that my faith is deeper today than it was yesterday, though not as deep and faithful as I hope it will be tomorrow. 
That means I'm trying to walk ever closer and ever more faithfully with my God. I want to use my life, my time, and my resources to serve well so that my life and interactions proclaim the good news of God's grace and do bring blessings, peace, and justice, trying to overcome this world's evil and turmoil. God's purpose is grace. To heal human sin, strife, and brokenness. To further our spiritual development for us to grow closer to God by deepening and improving our walk of faith with Jesus Christ and by recognizing our unique place and purpose within God's plan. Whatever our situation or circumstance, whatever our tribulation, worry, or fear, our call is to live in hope trust and faithfully serve well along whatever this journey is that the Lord has placed before us. Fellow laborers and fellow disciples, we are, each one of us, blessed and equipped with God to make a difference in this world so that we can have a positive influence toward goodness. And sometimes... God chooses to answer our prayers by putting us to work. Perhaps to strengthen or encourage someone else's journey of faith. Or to let grace, patience, and compassion soften a conflict. Or to proclaim God's relentless love to the discouraged and beaten. And thereby make God's love and grace visible by our words, our deeds, and our attitude. And third, since we do recognize today as Father's Day, it seems appropriate that we might want to focus on what that might be. Thinking and reflecting on the meaning and faithfulness of godly fatherhood reminded me of a favorite painting I saw one time. It was a looking into a young child's bedroom at night. There's a soft glow of moonlight streaming through a window, shining on this child's face, sleeping peacefully and secure, looking serene and content with a sense of well-being. You can clearly see and feel that all is right in that young child's life. And kneeling at the foot of the bed, there's a man, the father, kneeling with his head bowed, his eyes closed, a faithful, loving, godly father, and urgent, fervent prayer. Beautiful image. The painting conveys a sense of his strength, a physical protector present, a guiding, loving presence to that child. There's also a sense of vulnerability. The Father's visible submission under the power and authority of God in humble intercession on the behalf of this precious and beloved child. It's a very moving, compelling snapshot of true fatherhood. A faithful father seeking God's blessings in the life of his child. Painting shows a man whose faith and walk with God is deep, real, and authentic as to permeate all of life and everything he says and does, not as an ostentatious or showy faith to impress others, and yet also not shy about the priority of God in his life. The question at hand is fatherly influence and responsibility, which, as it turns out, is far more than just a Hallmark greeting card. Today, we gratefully celebrate and honor the steadfast faithfulness of our Heavenly Father, our biological fathers who gave us life, and the many others who provide healthy masculine role models. On this Father's Day, let us celebrate and honor faithful fathers, all those men who serve so well in the role of blessing children, all who give of themselves on the behalf of a child, regardless of whether or not they share the same DNA. 
Today we honor those who actually do the tasks of nurture and admonition, including stepfathers, uncles, grandfathers, neighbors, scoutmasters, couches, teachers, and all those many other mentors, all who provide spiritual guidance and example, all who are such a blessing to our dear children. The focus and question is about our influence on our children. From the life priorities and values that you've actually modeled, how important would your children say it is to live a life of faith? Surely a child is the very pinnacle of God's marvelous creation. And consider that God trusts us and allows us to influence them granting us to make a real difference in a child's life. For as influences, we have been given an awesome task and responsibility. God has called us to teach and show the children what we believe, to pass along our faith, to instill values and character, to pass along integrity down through these coming generations, and in a sense, let them stand upon our shoulders. Jesus describes it this way in Matthew 5. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one after lighting a lamp puts it under a bushel basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. And that is the word of God. Let us pray. Almighty and gracious God, we are so grateful for life, for all that you've entrusted to our care. Help us, Lord. Strengthen us. Help us live as you intend. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us stand and sing 838, Standing on the Promises.
And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you.